is typically playing outdoors using solar energy to power up our amplifiers. I'd like to play a song uh, which I wrote um, within the past two years. I heard that today is the second year anniversary of Sandy and I'm very impressed that uh, the building survived. It was just getting going but also that the community has survived. So Sandy was a huge wake-up call for, for us and here, here on the Eastern Seaboard we really hadn't experienced it much like this before. So uh, this song is on our new album which is called Sora Yatra which means solar trek. This instrument is actually called a jimbush. It's a Turkish instrument and uh, I found that it was quite light. And so for our trek modified to become more of a bluegrass band. <laughs> Shattering expectations Dressed in sassy pants A fiery reputation Lights out in a flash Great anticipation Running for the wine, leading desperation, higher ground, time to hide. Sandy's calling.
Sandy's Calling. I wanted to dedicate that to this wonderful building that has survived Sandy. And is Thanks so much. I, I really to the need for you don't know more and more. Much. It means to me that you came here and thank you very much. educating everyone a little further. And that's what we have to do. Yeah. Well, I look forward to get educated more today and, and as, yeah. as the days on this wonderful building. I'm so glad you're the one that took this on. I'm even more proud that it's in Brooklyn. Um, as you know, Brooklyn, the president of the architects of the Brooklyn area. This, this, this is delightful to be here. Yeah. And they all got to see it also and hear yeah. lectures about it. And yesterday, um, we brought, and Monday, we brought Sixth and seventh graders, two classes from Manhattan. Erica oh took the sixth graders <laughs> on Monday, and I took the seventh graders on Tuesday. And thirty of them went through every inch and asked questions that I had never heard before, but loved it. And all said the worms aren't actually that bad down there. <laughs> we thought it was going to be more <laughs> smelly, yeah. more smelly, but. Um, they really had a good time, and very much kudos to their teachers. Um, I think the elementary school is doing a futurist future design, city. Future City. So they brought them here as a little bit of an inspiration to make a design in their classes, which is really nice to see them starting at that early age. This building, to me, was a product of probably a thought that I had when I was six years old visiting the 1965 World's Fair, which inspired me to maybe do the things I do and, you know, be an architect and those things. But, you know, I have to say it's been a long road. Nothing that is worth anything comes easy. And believe me, we struggled a lot here to get this done. And I really appreciate all our friends. and. I consider the Brooklyn A one of our friends, and thank well, you for your help. And not not only is it um, a great feat in design and in, in energy efficiency, but it's a space that when people walk in, they're happy. And I think that that's right. probably the biggest, the greatest thing, at least for me, when when I design a space and, and right. make people happy. Right. That's that's right. the best gift. So. Okay. So. I've got this New York Solar Energy Society, where we actually raise money to educate children, families, and now professionals and teachers about energy efficiency and renewable energy. So I'm sitting down in the city council, public hearing, on Thursday, I'm sitting in this plastic chair for five hours, listening to folks talk about why don't we have building codes? Why don't we have more ground source heat transfer for heating our buildings? Why don't we have more solar thermal? It's not just photoelectrics. This building runs on a lot of different technologies that is not just having PV panels. But in the minds of everybody, it's all, ooh, solar PV, electric panels on the roof. I like them, I don't like them. They're too expensive. They're very inefficient compared to the other renewable energies. What's the temperature under this ground in this building? We've raised it to 70 degrees. <laughs> it's supposed to be 55. Yeah, it's, about, yeah, it's about 55 degrees. In the summer, you're raising it because you're doing your cooling. Right. In the winter, guess what happens to that 70 degrees? It's Bring all it my free in. heat. Bring it on in. Why all are we my doing free. just so that's what you can't see? You can see all that PV, 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 photoelectrics, but you can't see ground source heat transfer. And it's the most important way to get rid of gas lines coming through all of our neighborhoods. Oh, fracking. Ah! No, no, no. Man, no. Fracking. Many, many other, you, our buildings are using what? The number six oil, which makes the big polluting uh, blast of black smoke above buildings. We're supposed to convert over to cleaner oil or to natural gas. Why don't we do ground source heat transfer? It's 54 degrees under this building. It warms up during the summer because you do your cooling, and then you begin to use that in the winter makes sense to me. So thank you, everybody. Uh, all right. So first, I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Scarano for this wonderful project and for giving us the opportunity. We were the structural engineers for the project, and we just realized it was our first 
this project as a company because we were just starting and and we were glad that we started with such a, an amazing project. And for us, the structure engineers, uh, the beauty about this is you, you get to see the structure. It never right. happens. Everywhere, inside, inside outside. outside. Everywhere, it, you have structure. So if you look around, everything you see was designed and it was optimized and really optimized. <laughs> Because we were trying to keep it affordable and we kept trying to keep it as a low cost. And you can see also that you have the internal structure and you have the outer structure, which is just for the, the solar panels and the wind turbines that would come, which wasn't supposed to be in contact with the interior structure because then you would break the, the thermal bridging be between outside and inside. And I don't want to talk much about structure because it's just structure, but... No, it's very interesting. He's modest. Yeah. I asked him, I said, we can't bring a crane here because <laughs> it's true. so narrow, the property, it's impossible. He says, you're going to build a six-story building without a crane? <laughs> I said, yes. You must make sure every single piece is light enough that two men could carry them. <laughs> every single piece of this building was hand-walked down not this beautiful garden path you see, <laughs> yeah. that narrow little walkway that exists going the other way, which used to exist there, and then raised with lock and tackle like they were building in the 1400s. And they built this whole building that way based on his design, and we didn't want to hide that. So all of the structure in the apartments is exposed so you could see it. Uh, I get the most comments from the kids, especially on the turnbuckles. <laughs> They're like, what happens if I loosen that a lot? I said, well, you better ask your mommy and daddy to leave the apartment because it may like start to roll down. And they're like, really? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so they're very, very like conscious of the fact that an action that they do will affect something so dramatically. And um, everyone loved the aesthetic. We're very happy with it. Uh, Mass bits of the, the install couldn't be here today because they're busy with their other work. But um, you guys, it was a very big part of what, of what we did. And we were happy that you could help us and happy that you can come out here. So, you know, right. and thank you. And by the way, you could hear more about them on the website. Oh, yeah, right. <laughs> I think they were interviewed as oh, you can yeah. right now. Many uh, <laughs> no, 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 we, we have, uh, like, I think it's like the longest interview on the yeah. website. So we had fun. All right. So thank yeah. you again. Thank you. For thank, coming. you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. So Tree Hugger is one of the most popular um, green lifestyle websites on the internet. Um, and I am obviously a reporter, but also the editor of the lifestyle section. So I just want to use this opportunity to say we're always looking for solutions because, you know, environmental problems can seem really big and overwhelming. But we really get excited about buildings like this and solutions like the ones that you can find here. So I just want to use this opportunity to say we're always looking for more solutions. We're excited to be writing up this one. And I hope that everyone will think of us when they've come up with the next really good one. Thanks. Doing a good job. Very good job. Thank you. Tuesday. Well, here's Mel. Hi, everybody. I've known Rob, Ellen, Rachel, and Jenna since I was three years old, and they are my family. And this is just incredible what he's done, what all of you have done to build this amazing space. The moment I walked in, I felt at home, comfortable, happy, and I think that that's what everybody benefits from. Just walking in somewhere and feeling comfortable. And here in New York City, it doesn't happen quite often. So thank you everybody for working hard and putting this space together. That's all I wanted to say. <laughs> Hello. Scott Yannick, Laurel Environmental. So uh, we, uh, we got involved in this when um, it was just a uh, like a, a piece of property with a lot of rubble on it, and uh, we had to do a lot of testing, and we brought uh, it through the uh, the brownfields program in the city. Um, there was uh, different kinds of contamination from basically from the rubble, from 
uh, historical fill and things like that that are um, you know kind of endemic in areas that have uh, fill in the city. And uh, so we basically did a lot of testing. Ron will attest to that. Uh, we did we cleaned up uh, I guess hazardous levels of uh, lead that were here on the property, uh, and we got it to the point where it was certified green by the city. We got the first uh, certified green property in uh, in, in the city. And the first plaque. By the way. first plaque. <laughs> and, and then and then the other thing that we uh, we did besides the uh, testing and the cleanup and all that was we helped with the uh, geothermal installation. And uh, you know we had a, we have a very small uh, drill rig that was basically the only thing that could fit down this narrow passageway. We have some pictures of it just kind of squeaking down the, uh, the alleyway. And uh, we put in um, how many, uh, six? Uh, 18 wells. 18 wells. It was, uh, it was a lot of work uh, and, and the whole job was a lot of work. I mean, Bob's crew, uh, Mike, Mike's crew that was, like basically took all of the soil, all the contaminated soil, went out of here by a wheelbarrow. I mean, usually, you know, you're using big equipment. This was <laughs> not that. So it was an interesting job, and I was very happy to be a part of it, and really love the, uh, the way it's come out. I mean, uh, every time I come here, I see, and I, I think finally this is it. Now a little more proof. No, we're not doing it, believe it or not. <laughs> but it's, it's beautiful. It's a work in progress. It's beautiful, and, and great job. Thank you, sir. President of Earthlink Technologies, Jeff Miller, happy to be here. Congratulations on the project. Thank you. You've had the opportunity to present or be a part of several net zero or near net zero uh, projects, but hearing that the community has already embraced this project, that there are so many enthusiastic stakeholders that are here today, is, it's light years beyond any of the other projects that we've been involved in. So I hope we can do a lot more of them together, and congratulations again. Uh, thanks everybody for coming. Um, I'm not great at speaking off the top of my head, but I'll try. Um, everybody in this room probably knows or came to know that Bob is a really passionate person with everything. Um, and he took this on in addition to running his own company and, you know, doing things for the Coast Guard and, you know, volunteering for the Coast Guard. You name it, he does it. And um, what he's accomplished here is really quite amazing. I don't even understand a lot of the technologies, but uh, it, it's just fascinating. It's amazing what he's accomplished. He's already talking about doing the next one. Um, like I think you said, we got to get this place, you know, rented, sold, whatever. But um, he's just amazing, and Mike's worked so tirelessly as well, or on my things as Mike is, um, and just everybody that contributed. Really, thank you. This is. Amazing, not just for this neighborhood, but for Brooklyn. Um, and here's to Brooklyn, and here's to my husband. He's so we're here, and uh, I just want to congratulate Bob because uh, this whole project is extremely inspirational. I live in our I live in our burn, which is far Rockaway, and there's a hideous. Uh, uh, development there and all the all the big condos are all have tilting roofs to the north and they're completely useless and ugly and, and stupid and uh, Bob <laughs> Bob on the other hand is actually is, is being smart and it's an inspiration and uh, and now I have a little house out there and I'm going net zero with my house I mean if Bob can do it ah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's an inspiration it's it's progressive cultural leadership and, uh, and uh, it is now, so somehow we figured out a way to finish, and with a lot of help from everyone, it was accomplished. So, if anybody wants to stick around, we'll, we can walk around. You can walk around independently. I'll have them open the doors. There's three apartments that are unoccupied, which you, or two, which you can see. The my prize, which is on 2B and 4A, and then the common roof, and then I'll be walking around too. If you have any questions, well, please feel free to walk around, look at the stuff, open the doors, touch stuff. Just, just don't tell me if you get hurt. <laughs> no. Thank you.